Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all on such a beautiful sunny day. So the service for July the 7th will begin, and we'll start with some welcome again. Thank you for coming to Trinity United Church Folk and Good Shepherd Anglican. It's wonderful to see so many people on a Sunday morning. <clears throat> so there are a few announcements. We'd like you to check the emails to make sure that you get the updated information. I'll pretend I'm at the game. Hi there, my name's Mary. Hi Mary. And the next home game is going to be my birthday. And I'm going to turn 80. I'm celebrating by A, working at the game, <laughs> as I usually do. But I've also made arrangements with Silo Mission that I will be collecting items for Silo Mission at the game and afterwards too, if you want. There's already some people that have brought some stuff to me. So I'm collecting hats. Socks, underwear, <laughs> underwear. <laughs> for silo mission. And Thanks, everyone. So before we carry on, we have a special welcome to Reverend Damber Kapka. <laughs> so Reverend Kapka responded to the call that Trinity extended to him with yes. So we're very grateful and welcome him to our congregation and our ministry at Trinity. Along with him is his wife, Sumatra, and she's just sitting in the aisle there. She wants to stand. So thank you both and welcome. And we hope our ministry together is a, a wonderful, beautiful experience and that we all thrive in this community and in this congregation. So with that, I'll carry on, unless there are other announcements that someone has to make. Seeing none, we'll carry on. So we're going to start with the land acknowledgements. People who have lived on this land for thousands upon thousands of years, this land on which we gather is the traditional land of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Denny peoples, and the homeland of the Red River Métis Nation. We worship the Creator on this land and acknowledge with respect the thousands of years of ceremony and relationship that are etched in footprint, fire, and faithfulness on the soil and the rock that surrounds us. And we'll carry on with the lighting of the affirming candle. So from the Christ candle, which we know lights the light of the world, we light the affirming candle that acknowledges <laughs> that acknowledges that all are welcome here. Whoever you are, whatever you do, whatever your gender is, whatever your identity is, you are welcome. And this is a safe place. Please be seated. Let us join together in opening prayer. Gracious God. Thank you for our diverse community and the love that binds us together. May we reflect your inclusive love in our worship today. Help us listen, learn, and grow in compassion. As we come together in worship, may your spirit unite us in harmony and understanding. Open our hearts to listen deeply, to learn from one another, and to grow in compassion and empathy. Bless our time together, that it may bring glory to your name and inspire justice and reconciliation in our world. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, who welcomed all to his people. Table, we pray. Amen. Amen. Scripture is our song for the journey, the living word passed on from generation to generation to guide and inspire. I'm doing two scripture readings today, both from the Good News Bible. The first is from the second book of Corinthians, verses 2 to 10. Paul's visions and revelations. I know a certain Christian man who 14 years ago was snatched up to the highest heaven. I do not know whether this actually happened or whether he had a vision. Only God knows. I repeat, I know that this man was snatched to paradise. Again, I do not know whether this actually happened or whether it was a vision. Only God knows. And there he heard things which cannot be put into words, things that human lips may not speak. So I will boast about this man, but I will not boast about myself, except the things that show how weak I am. If I wanted to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be telling the truth. But I will not boast, because I do not want anyone to have a higher opinion of me than he has as a result of what he has seen me do and heard me say. But to keep me from being puffed up with pride because of the many wonderful things I saw, I was given a painful physical ailment which acts as Satan's messenger to beat me and keep me from being proud. Three times I prayed to the Lord about this and asked him to take it away. But his answer was, my grace is all you need, for my power is greatest when you are weak. I am most happy then to be proud of my weaknesses in order to feel the protection of Christ's power over me. I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The second reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 to 12, to 13, sorry. Jesus is rejected at Nazareth. Jesus left that place and went back to his hometown, followed by his disciples. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many people were there, and when they heard him, they were all amazed. Where did he get all this, they asked. What wisdom is this that he has been given? How does he perform miracles? Isn't he the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters living here? And so they rejected him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is respected everywhere except in his own hometown and by his relatives and his family. He was not able to perform any miracles there, except that he placed his hands on a few sick people and healed them. He was greatly surprised because the people did not have faith. Then Jesus went to the villages round there, teaching people. He called the twelve disciples together and sent them out two by two. He gave them authority over the evil spirits and ordered them, Don't take anything with you on your journey except a stick. No bread, no beggar's bag, no money in your pockets. Wear sandals, but don't carry an extra shirt. He also said, wherever you are welcomed, stay in the same house until you leave that place. If you come to a town where people do not welcome you or will not listen to you, leave it and shake the dust off your feet. That will be a warning to them. So they went out and preached that people should turn away from their sins. They drove out many demons and rubbed olive oil on many sick people and healed them. May God bless to our understanding these readings from Holy Scripture. Good morning, beloved congregation. Good morning. Good morning. This is your new ministry standing in front of you today. <laughs> and I want to congratulate the church committee. 
It's not because they hired me. <laughs> it's because they fired me when the interview was going on here. And I had to go through twice. And both times I felt like I'm digging deep into somewhere, I may not be able to come out. I'm so glad to be here this morning. As I was telling you my name, Denver. Pronouncing any unusual name is quite a challenge always. It's not something that we can achieve at a time. It takes a couple of times of practice. So my friend, Bill Miller, with whom I served the, in the ministry for 10 years, it took three years for him to pronounce my right name. <laughs> and you know what? I was never offended. I was never offended because that's the way how we learn things, right? We learn things from mistakes. We fall and rise again. We fall and rise again. That's what the way of life it is. So, I stand before you today with a heart overflowing with gratitude to God and to each one of you and to the church community who welcomed me into this vibrant community of faith. It is an honor and a privilege to serve as your minister. And I'm eager to embark on this journey of faith together. To those of our members watching this recording later in the week on YouTube, I extend a warm welcome to you as well. Though we are physically apart, we are united in spirit as members of the body of Christ. Your presence whether in person or online, is a blessing to our community. Let us pray. Gracious God, today we gather in your presence with hearts full of gratitude. Thank you for the gift of worship, your word, and this community of believers. We recognize our complete dependence on your grace, which sustains us in adversity and strengthens us in weakness. Help us apply these lessons in our lives, trusting in your provision and sharing your grace with others. Amen. Today we gather to reflect on the profound message of grace that resonates through the scriptures in our scripture reading this morning. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2 to 10, and Mark 6, 1 to 30. We encounter stories of adversity, weakness, and ultimately the overwhelming grace of God. Let's begin with the story of a woman whose name was Stacy. Once there was a young woman named Stacy who was known for her infectious joy and unwavering faith. Despite facing a chronic illness from a young age, Stacy approached life with a remarkable sense of peace and gratitude. Her friends often wondered how she managed to maintain such positivity despite her physical challenges. One day, during a church gathering, Stacy was asked to share her testimony. She stood before the congregation and spoke about her journey with illness. At first, she began, I struggled with why this had to happen to me. But through prayer and reflection, I realized that God's grace is sufficient for me. In my weakness, His strength is made perfect. Stacy recounted how, in her weakest moments, she felt God's presence more profoundly than 
ever before. She described instances where she found unexpected comfort and peace, even during painful treatments and hospital stays. God has shown me that His grace is not just a concept, she said with a smile, but a living reality that sustains me every day. Her story deeply moved everyone present. Stacey's life became a testament to the truth found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. In 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul speaks of his own struggle with the thorn in the flesh, a constant reminder of his human frailty. Despite pleading with the Lord three times to remove it, Paul receives a divine response. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Here, Paul acknowledges that it is not through his own strength or merit that he perseveres, but through the unmerited favor and grace of God. This grace sustains him, empowers him, and ultimately brings glory to God even in his weakness. Similarly, in Mark's Gospel, we see Jesus facing rejection in his hometown of Nazareth. Despite his miraculous works and profound teachings, the people question his authority and dismiss him as merely the carpenter, the son of Mary. Yet, Jesus does not let their unbelief dead for him. Instead, he continues his ministry, extending the grace of God to those who are willing to receive it. He sends out his disciples with nothing but a staff and sandals, relying completely on the hospitality of, and grace of others a tangible expression of divine provision amidst challenges. Friends, you have hired a refugee immigrant. As you have ministered to this vibrant community, we have numerous ministries and services that we have been providing to the community and in our neighborhood. When I read your profile, you know what? I stepped back once. Oh no. It's too much. I have a lot to work on. I have a lot to pray for. And the most beautiful part is that I will not be alone. God will be with me. And you will be with me. So we will be breaking the knots together. This journey might be very challenging for us. Like Paul expresses in his writings. Jesus sent his disciples with nothing, empty-handed, to the field where they might have to struggle a lot. They have been told that grace is sufficient for you. Go! At some point, these disciples might have nothing to think about. The other way, they might be so scared without a gun, without a pistol in the pocket. How would they go out and serve the people there? But they choose. Okay, we have set you go. We'll go because we are not alone in the way. God will go before us. God will go before us. So this is what we do every single Sunday here. We come with hope. 
we come with our brokenness, our imperfections, and weird things that we bring into this space to celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate with our friends and families. And we share this with God as well, in God's presence, in this very space. As we reflect on these scriptures today, let us embrace the reality of God's grace in our lives. Let us surrender our weaknesses and inadequacies to God, knowing that God's grace is more than sufficient. Let us trust in God's provision and guidance, even when the path ahead seems uncertain. And let's extend that the same grace to others knowing that we are all recipients of God's unmerited favor. In closing, let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for calling us into your service and for equipping us with everything we need. Help us to embrace our weaknesses, knowing that your strength is made perfect in them. Guide us, Lord, as we seek to follow you well and to serve you faithfully. Bless our ministry together and use us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we will be joining together in singing from our voices, Come Touch Our Hearts, verses 1 to 4. Strength in witness through your grace, 
Everything we have comes from you. And with grateful hearts, we give this back to you. Just as Paul boasted in witnesses, knowing your power is perfected in witness, we have to surrender our offerings with humility. May these gifts advance your kingdom, bringing light in darkness, hope in despair, and love where there is need. Thank you, God for the privilege to give back a portion of your blessings. Multiply these blessings for your glory, according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. These are the prayers of the people for Trinity United Church and Good Shepherd on July 7th. First of all, um, I'm just gonna add this little um, to this little sentence to my prayer. <laughs> um, I want to thank um, Mary um, and all the 80 year olds and over and <laughs> all the 70, 80, 90 year olds um, who come to this church and who make such significant contributions and who role play devotion and caring for this church. So we ju I just want to, I just that came to me as I was sitting at the end, and we just don't praise all that is offered by this community. So first of all, I'll start out then. God, thank you for opening our hearts to listen to the stories that the Bible tells us of love and connection. We are grateful for the time we have together, for the privilege and opportunity we have to enjoy the jewel of a warm summer day in Winnipeg. In this world, and in our culture, our westernized culture, and especially in Winnipeg, it is a time that we bring family and community together. We are so gifted to be able to make these connections. In our hearts sometimes, many times, we have murmurings of our struggles and loss. And sometimes these are lo our losses and our struggles. They're hard to ignore. Summertime isn't always an easy time for people, especially if they've had losses and they're going through struggles. It can become more pronounced. I remember family gatherings during the summertime. My mother's birthday, she's no longer here, and my, my birthday, and I noticed people aren't there. And I, I actually lost a little brother during the summer in a very warm, human day. There are many missing people in our family. There are many missing people in our congregants. We love them and we miss them. And we sometimes ask God why. But we are not alone in our experience of loss or grief. Through grace, we know that we are connected to each other through these experiences, as well as through joys. In connections of stories, we can learn how our weaknesses become our strength. It allows us to reach out to God, to be, to be open to faith and healing. Through, our, through grace, with love of community, we become open to experiencing new selves in our interactions and communities. Today we are so blessed to begin a new journey of learning and of becoming new to ourselves and others. Today we are filled with gratitude and wholeheartedly welcome our new minister, and I hope I get the name right, but excuse me if I don't, and thank you for your forgiveness, uh, Minister Danver Kadka. We are so grateful for the people who have steadfast in this community while well, we have had no minister for Irma Nadeau, who has managed the day-to-day -day activities and more. She's provided pastoral services and, and so much leadership, and especially for the leadership demonstrated in the worship community, Carolyn Pearson, Leslie Johnson, Kyle Torney, Ethel Campbell, and Gerda Galang. We are thankful for all those who contribute through committee and through offerings. And now we are thankful, even though it's very noisy, <laughs> uh, for the beginning of our um, renovations uh, that was conducted by the Properties Committee. The struggles of the world beckon at our door. 
These stirrings of concerns stay with us as we implore God to help people see opportunities for peace in Gaza, in the Ukraine, and in so many other places in the world. The complexity of what it is to be human is conveyed in our stories in the Bible. These tell, stories tell us that when we listen, when we seek God, we bring, to, bring each other together, we reach out to, to each other, and we demonstrate faith. Thank you so much for our ability to listen, to have faith, and to heal. We are grateful that we are not alone, that as individuals we heal, and as community there is potential to become more than a sum of our parts. By your grace, God, we recognize the people who come to worship here, who bring their gifts, their hopes, and their interests in connecting with each other in God and community. Help us continue to see each other's goodness and celebrate our sharing. Let us take a moment to ask for your continued healing for ourselves uh, as individuals, members of communities, as member, as citizens of the world. We ask for your healing touch. We now say the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And this is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For our closing hymn, we'll be joining in singing from Voices United 884. You shall go out with joy. trusting in God's strength, like Paul and the disciples. May we step out in faith, knowing that God's grace is sufficient for us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.